Hi there everyone, my name is Priyag Jitani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale. And today I'm gonna to tell you what it takes to match into plastic surgery. And we're gonna do it by comparing it to orthopedic surgery. These are two of the most competitive specialties ever to match into in the United States. And we're just gonna show you why that's the case and how maybe we can get around it. Let's get to it. So the general gist that we're gonna talk about today is just how competitive plastic surgery can be. It is definitely one of the most competitive specialties in all of medicine. We're gonna to compare it to another very, very competitive specialty which is known as orthopedic surgery. The point of this is to understand step one scores, the types of experiences everyone does, and the whole gist is that we hope that by doing this, we can actually provide you information to match, match accordingly. The comparison is more for fun and contrast. It's not intended to imply that one specialty is better than another. But to put everything into context, I will tell you plastic surgery this year in 2022 had a match rate in the inter integrated six-year program of about 55%. 351 people applied and only 194 matched. That means about one in two people applying to the integrated six-year plastic surgery residency did not match. Similarly, for orthopedic surgery, 1,470 people applied for orthopedic surgery residency spots this year and only 875 match, which, which leaves an average match rate of about 50%. I want you to know that in general, about 80 to 90% of people who go to MD or DO schools tend to match. That's the overall match rate. But these specialties are that competitive that their match rates are usually around 50 to 60%. So now let's just get straight into the demographics of plastic surgery residents. So this slide actually shows the number of total plastic surgery residents across the United States right now. Plastic surgery is a six-year residency, and so right now there are about 1,000 uh, plastic surgery residents across all six of those years spread across the United States. Um, of those 1,000, and the actual number is 987, 56.4 are male, 43.6 are female, and you can see that um, you can break them down by IMGs, International Medical Graduates, MDs, and DOs, and you can see that 94.5% of plastic surgery residents across the country are MDs, 4.6% are IMGs, and 0.8% are DOs. Now, let's compare this to ortho. You can see that ortho um, has many more um, residents across the country, and part of this is just the demand um, in terms of the number of orthopedic residents. There's around 800 per class. Ortho is a five-year residency, and so that means there's around 4,000 orthopedic um, surgery residents. And similarly, plastics is around 150 to 200 uh, residents per class, and it's a six-year residency. And because of that, there's around 1,000 uh, plastic surgery residents. You can see that obviously plastics and uh, ortho are uh, male dominant, um, which is this uh, existing trend that is slowly starting to change. But you can see the discrepancy is a much um, much less stark in plastics than it is in ortho, which tends to be a little bit more male dominant. Uh, the similarities are between MDs is still true. Both orthopedic um, surgery residents and plastic surgery residents tend to majority uh, majority be MDs. And then um, the difference is that ortho has um, DOs in second, and then um, plastics has uh, IMGs in second. Now, if we want to focus on step scores, let's talk about plastic surgery step scores, and then we'll compare them to ortho. So you can see here that this table displays the uh, statistics for the step one and step two scores. Step one and step two, until this year, step one used to be graded on the same numerical score that step two was. Um, and so because of that, they actually can create something like this. So the data here is for the 177 first year residents in plastics. These are people who got in and not everyone who applied. So obviously this is gonna be a bit higher than you expect because these are the people who actually matched as opposed to those who may not have matched. And you can see that if you just go across here, you can see if you go across 10.2% had a step one score above 259, and then 37.9% had a step one score between 250 and 259. So if you look at just 250 and above, you can see that almost 50% of applicants, uh, well not applicants, 50% of those who were accepted had step one scores above 250. Similarly, if you want to look at step two scores, you can see that 36.2% um, 30, had step two scores between 250 to 259, and 32.2 had step two scores above 259, which means 70% of the accepted incoming residents had step two CK scores above 250. Just goes to show you, those are insanely good scores, by the way, everyone. 250 on both step one and step two are incredible. 250 on step one, I think, is at least 90th percentile. 250 on step two may be a bit lower than that, maybe 85th or 80th, 
but still incredible scores, but just goes to show you how competitive plastic surgery can be. Now I kind of want to show you um, the average, the standard deviation, the 10th percentile, 25th, 50th, 75th, and 90th. You'll see that there's no data on complex here because it seems like the um, of the data that was collected, there wasn't anyone who had taken the complex. Uh, instead, everyone had just taken step one and step two. But again, you can see that the median score on step one was um, 249, and the median score on step two was 255. Similarly, the 75th percentile was 262 and 268 for step two. Similarly, 259 and 255 for step one. Again, insanely, insanely incredible scores. Let's compare this to ortho now, which is just as competitive, not more competitive than plastic surgery, uh, purely by match rate. And you can see that again, the 90th percentile scores, 268, 268, that's the same. Um, and then if you look at step one, it's 260 for ortho, 259.4 for plastics. Let's look at the median score. It's 249 um, versus 247, and then 254 for step 2 CK versus uh, 255. So quite literally identical scores. We can't compare complex or complex because um, because we don't have complex data for plastics, but we do have complex data for ortho. So you can kind of see that here. And I've also made a separate video on ortho if you want to watch that. I'll link it right above right here. Um, so that's the general gist um, for step one and step two scores, and hopefully that's helpful for you. The next thing I want to then talk about is research because people always think about research publications and that adding on to your step scores. And again, plastics is so competitive that we can actually look at the 177 people who actually matched, and you can see that there's a 90th percentile, 75th, 50th, 25th, 10th, and average. But you can see that the average number of abstracts, presentations, and publications add all of them up because an abstract, you may have just presented it. You don't necessarily have to publish it, but the average number was 20. The average number of research experiences, which isn't necessarily just publications. It could be a research project you did, a mentorship opportunity, whatever it is. The average number there is 5.4. The number of work experiences is 3.7, which is usually when you get paid for a job. And the number of volunteer experiences is around 8.4. And um, the percentiles are listed accordingly. Let's now compare this to ortho. And again, it's going to be very similar. And don't get intimidated, but you know, just to, just to show you how competitive these specialties are. The average number of abstracts, presentations, and publications for the accepted ortho residents coming in this year is 13.9. So you can see plastics had a significantly higher average for abstracts, presentations, and publications. Um, the work experiences are actually exactly the same. The volunteer experience is about the same in terms of averages as are the research experiences, 5.4, maybe a bit higher for plastics. Um, so all of this is obviously really overwhelming if you're applying to residency. I, I encourage you to not get too skewed by the numbers. These are all intended to inform you, to help educate you, to help you see that sort of landscape. But again, remember statistics apply to populations, not individuals. So this is intended to just inform you, to show you the kind of vibe that certain specialties have. And at the very least, I hope it was educational for you. Um, and if it was, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and let me know if there's any other specialties you want to see. I'm happy to do them, and we'll go from there. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.